Welcome to Voices, a televised production of the Atlantic Caribbean Union of Seventh-day Adventists. We proudly represent the islands of the Bahamas, Cayman Islands, as well as Turks and Caicos Islands. Today, as we continue our journey through the year 2018 and our focus in doing better in our lives, we are focusing today on family and family worship. And within the union, we have such a superb gentleman who can assist us, but he specializes in prayer as well as family ministries. Our executive secretary, family ministries director, and prayer coordinator for the union, Pastor Carl, will guide us through this discussion on family time and family worship. Pastor Carl, welcome back to Voices. How are you today? Oh, good. Thank you so much. Thank you, Siobhan. It's a pleasure being with you again. Wonderful. I'm so happy to have you here. Sorry. Now, Pastor, can you, before we really get into anything, can you please say a prayer for us? Indeed. Let us right. pray. Oh, Father, we thank you that we are able to have this discussion here today. We ask that your presence will be with us as we discuss this important subject of the family and family worship. Bless your people today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Pastor Carr, thank you. It's a pleasure. <laughs> I know you love prayer. Yeah. Um, so, Pastor, how have you been since the last time I've seen you, and how is your ministry going here at the Union? Oh, well, since the last time you saw me, we had Christmas, and we had New Year, <laughs> and we had a lot of fun, mm -hmm. and, uh, of course, um, family time, and uh, we enjoyed our children and, and grandchildren being with us. Ooh. So we had wonderful times to pray with them, to to interact with them, to play, and to have fun, yes. and to place them in God's care. And um, the new year started off with this num a number of challenges, but thank God we can always sense his presence. Yes. And we know that he never leaves nor forsakes us. He's, never. He's a great God. Pastor, I am so happy that God brought you into the new year to have this discussion with yes. us. And so we're here to talk about family, mm -hmm. but more specifically family worship. Mm -hmm. And so is family worship just something that we do? Is it just a ritual that we go through to pass time? Mm. Yeah, family worship has been a Christian discipline mm. for generations. Um, it's coming from way back, from early times. We, we think of the pioneers. The, the, we think of Abraham, who built his altar everywhere he went, mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and, and worshipped God. And so in his house, everybody knew that family worship was a part of the order of the day. Uh, they lived that. It was, for them, a lifestyle. Uh, when Israel came out of Egypt, God admonished his people to build an altar and worship. The evening and morning sacrifice right. was, a part, we, was a part of worship, was their worship experience. And so when, when we worship today in the morning and in the evening, we are offering our morning and evening sacrifices to God. Elijah thought it important to rebuild the family altar as, as a means of rev beginning a revival and a reformation in Israel. In, 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 in 1 Kings 18, uh, when Elijah met there at Mount Carmel, the first thing he could do before he lifted the people to God, he restored the broken down altar mm. that he found. And today, the onus is on every Adventist family to restore those broken down family altars mm. in order for us to have a revival among us it's going to begin with the restoration of the family altar and that's what we are talking about today we're talking about family worship and how to really have a revival beginning in our homes well it sounds like you are ready to preach pastor oh. <laughs> But I just want you, you brought out two things for me. One, a key word that I heard was a lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And so it means that it has to be something on a continuous basis. It has to be a part of us. Indeed. Indeed, yes. Okay. So that's one aspect. And then the other would be that it's a primary institution. It sounds like this was established from in the beginning. 
Indeed. In terms of tabernacles and so on. So can you explain for us why these are primary institutions uh, for the Christian home? Yes. Well, family worship is, uh, allows us to experience a number of things. And um, the benefits of it are many, but let me mention a few. Hmm. One, it allows for Christian families to connect with God. And I'm using the word connect because that's what we need. There is a disconnect mm -hmm. between the people and their God in this time and this age. And there is a generational disconnect. Even in our homes and our families, there's a disconnect between parents and their children, between siblings, because everybody is so busy today paying attention to other things. The young people are locked away in their room with their devices in their ears mm -hmm. where, while their parents are on the outside. And our days have become so busy right. that we hardly find time to pray. And so what family worship seeks to accomplish is to have families reconnected with God and maintain that steady connection with God. And I think that you'll agree with me that every family still needs that. Yes. It also allows, family worship allows for family bonding. Mm -hmm. Time together to pray connects us with one another. And, and family worship also allows us to create strong and lasting spiritual legacy. I'm sure that when, when I'm gone from off the face of the earth and dead and gone, I'd like to know that my children and grandchildren still go to church on Sabbath. Right. I'd like to know that they still observe the, the, the time of worship and they pray to their God, yes? I'd like, to, I'd like to know that they maintain their love for the church and faithfulness right. in missionary work. <laughs> and that is the kind of spiritual legacy we seek to impart in family worship, yes? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. I, I, I can attest to its beauty yes. and its power whenever my mom, because my mother encourages us to have family worship. Mm -hmm. And, you know, life is busy, as you said, but it is wonderful. It's a wonderful it feeling. Is, it is. You feel rejuvenated every time after you finish worship. Yes. And so that's why I'm so happy that you brought those things out, particularly mm -hmm. the legacy aspect. Mm -hmm. I don't think we take that into consideration, yeah. that what you impart into your children, we then give on to our children. That's and right. those that come into our lives in future. You reap what you sow. Right? Yes, yes, okay. that's so Indeed. true. Mm -hmm. So, Pastor Carr, Ephesians 6, verse 12 is said to be used in many sermons and scenarios, even political speeches. But what does this tell us about the importance of family worship? Ephesians 6, verse 12 says, We wrestle not against flesh and blood. Yeah? Yes, sir. Uh, against principalities and powers, against spiritual wickedness in high places. This is a warning to every Christian. And it is especially a powerful warning to the church members. This text is alerting us to the presence of demonic forces all around us. And they are not absent from our homes. These demonic forces, these spiritual wickedness that we wrestle against, are fighting against your marriage, your children, your husband, your wife, your parents, these spiritual forces are stirring up conflicts with, and, and contentions and storms mm -hmm. that arise from sometimes nowhere. But the Christian needs to know that these storms are coming from the enemy who is the devil. He hates to see a happy home and a happy marriage. Mm. Mm -hmm. And the same kind of attack he yes. launches against the other institution out of Eden, which is the Sabbath. <laughs> he has launched a similar attack, an even more vicious attack on the family. Because he knows that society... Where the family goes, so goes the society. Mm -hmm. Where the family goes, so goes your church. Where the family goes, so goes your home. 
and, and, and your, your business places, your work. So God is seeking today to alert us to the presence of demonic forces at war against the family and tells us for you to overcome them, you've got to put on the armor. What God wants to see is that in every home, a shelter is prepared for the family members to seek cover. And that kind of spiritual shelter is family worship. Wow. Pastor Carr, I know that we have very many persons that watch this show mm -hmm. and are watching right now that needed to hear that. They needed to hear that it is the act of the devil yes, yes, yes. that only comes to seek, kill, and destroy our happy homes. Yes, yes. And so I thank you for reiterating those words. Indeed. Now, unfortunately, time is really moving so quickly. We have to take this quick break. But ladies and gentlemen, do not leave. Please call your friends, call your families, and get connected with us. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Hello there. I have a question for you. What's in your mouth? You see, if I was at home, my mouth would probably be filled with food. But today, our mouths are filled with so many things. They're filled with sorrow, filled with pain. Our mouths are filled with gossip and profanities. But I submit to you, this Bible text, right here, Psalms chapter 71, verse 8. My mouth shall be filled continually with the splendor of your glory. I think if we decide to fill our mouths with the glory of God, His goodness, His love, His mercy, the pain that we feel, the sorrow that we experience, all of the profanities and the gossiping will find its exit because the glory of God is so much. It fills our heart and it has to come out somewhere. And the same mouth that we use to, you know, fill up with all those things that don't necessarily help us, is going to truly Glory God. So I encourage you today, think about the goodness of God. Think about what He has done for you and use that mouth to glorify God. Welcome back to Voices. I am your hostess, Siobhan. And today we have been having a discussion with Pastor Carr on family time and family worship. Pastor Carr, as we've been having this discussion, there are a few things that are coming to mind. The first being, what are different aspects of worship and what should we always consider during this time? Yes, I'm glad you asked because there are many people who need to know how to make worship really meaningful mm -hmm. uh, and what it really accomplishes for them. We said a little bit earlier about that, but family in worship, the family, like I say, gets a chance to express their love for God and they are able to do it together. Yeah, they, they, they joy in the Lord, they worship in praise and thanksgiving. They get a chance to pray together. They pray for one another. Mm -hmm. They pray with one another. And they pray for God's presence to be in their lives. It's a chance when we can hear our loved ones calling our name before God in prayer. It's a time when, we, when the family can request presence of God in their lives, his protection and his care. At no time should anybody leave home in the morning without a season of prayer mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. We're not talking about just individual prayer. We're talking about now family coming together mm -hmm. and enriching each other by a word of prayer. And worship doesn't have to be a long thing. It, you, you have different days when you can vary your worship experience. Okay. You could have a little longer one on, say, Friday evening. But during the course of the week, with your busy lifestyle, you mm. can choose to just pray together in the morning, read a passage. Make sure that the Word of God is read in the morning, no matter how busy you are. It is when you read the Word that God speaks to you. He speaks through his word, and we speak to him through prayer. Mm -hmm. We cannot have a one-sided communication. That's right. So, so if you're going to talk to God in prayer, make sure you take a little time to hear him. 
and to hear him, you hear him through his word. He speaks, and the sound of his voice is so sweet, the birds hush their singing. Oh. And in the quiet, in the morning hours, it is so nice to worship when every other voice is hushed. And in quietness, the soul waits before God. The silence of the soul makes more distinct the voice of God, says Ellen G. White. So families come together and pray. They study the word together. They fellowship together. It's a family bonding together. And they share experiences, give a little testimony. Yes. So sometimes family worship can be a little longer. But at no time should it be, the prayers in worship should be so long that it becomes boring. Mm. Family worship is not a place for long prayer. It's not. No. No. Especially when you have, you see, family worship has to be age appropriate. If you have little children in your family, for example, you have to structure the worship experience for their age. All right. And if the little baby prays and say, you say, pray today, and the baby says, bless my mommy yes. and my daddy and my <laughs> sister, and bless me and bless my teacher and my friends, the adult doesn't need to pray after that. No. That is the prayer for the day. That is the prayer for worship. Mama and daddy must recognize and accept the prayer of that child, oh. that God hears that child's prayer, and it is family worship prayer. Bless my mommy. You can go through the door mm -hmm. with that prayer that the little child said. And, 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 and so, yes, we, and, and so make the prayer short if you are the adult praying. Don't allow that child to pray, kneel down until the knees begin to hurt. <laughs> ah, that, wouldn't yes. be, that wouldn't be fun. That would be punishment. Yes. <laughs> And family worship is not supposed to be punishment. It's mm -hmm. intended to be fun for everyone. So make it fun, make it exciting, but make it a rich personal experience and let it allow for family to connect together into personal relationship with one another so that even when they go away from home, they will remember the seasons of prayer and will practice what they learned at home. So when you send your child off to college in mm. Sweden or in Russia, yes. you need to know that that child still worships and enjoys the experience. Amen. Mm. Pastor, I wish I had this, this episode while I was growing up mm -hmm. because my uncle, he demanded that we had family worship, mm -hmm. my aunt and himself and myself every morning. Amen. And we had it. And every morning at 5 o'clock, he'd come and he'd wake us up. Come, time for worship. Amen. Come, come, come. And I remember one time that he actually said, he, he usually thought that we weren't paying attention. Mm -hmm. But children tend to pay attention. Yeah, of course, and yeah. so I think parents need to recognize that. And one morning he said a particular text. And the following morning he said, come, 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 the same thing. Mm -hmm. Time to do this worship thing again. And I'm mm -hmm. like, oh. And so I sat there and I listened. And I said, wait. This is the same thing that you said yesterday. Ah. And so when I brought it to him, he said, oh, oh, you're paying attention. And I said, of course I am. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So I think that's something that parents need to recognize, too, that parents, children do pay attention. Yes. Sometimes we just don't have the right way of showing that we pay attention. Oh, yeah, they pay attention differently. They're listening while playing. Yes, and yes, they're, they're, definitely. They're hearing, they're hearing. And I'm glad that you're... Your family's prayer sessions have turned out to be a great blessing for you. And uh, only in the kingdom, when we get there, and we sit at the feet of Jesus to discuss mm -hmm. some of these things, will we recognize what those seasons of prayer did for you. How many dangers, toils, and snares those prayer sessions did saved you from. Mm -hmm. How God took you through tough, difficult times because somebody prayed for you. Yes. Somebody had you on in mind and took the time to pray for you. Yes, that's very true, Pastor Carr. <clears throat> so, thank you for that. You're um, one of the things that I got from your speaking just now was that family worship should be done outside of personal worship. But it also sounds as though we should have it in the morning and evening, as you said. Is there a specified time 
when you think it's best because you're saying if we do it early in the morning. So for some early in the morning, when it comes to time, they might be thinking five o'clock, mm -hmm. six o'clock. Mm -hmm. So for those who have to be to work for nine, what would you suggest for them in terms of times? I think the family needs to come together and agree on a time. Okay. That is best for everyone. Mm -hmm. Because you want family worship to be fun for all, and, and you want to involve the family in worship and praise. And so, four o'clock in the morning is punishment. People want to sleep. Mm. Don't wake them up and we demand that they be up at four or five. Well, it's not a, it, it's a thing that you have to look at and see how this fits into the schedule of the family. Right. The important thing is that you find a place for it. The timing of it may not be too critical, but the placement of a place of, of a time of worship has to be there. Um, in the morning, we say, before you leave the house, get to together to pray. There's some folks who have worship just at the breakfast table. Mm. We are ready to go. Breakfast is ready. Let's come together. And around the table, they join hands. They read a passage or a promise from the Lord. It doesn't have to be a Bible, just a verse of scripture. In some places they have on the table little verses mm. and you could pull one and everybody from the family read one. Promise from the Lord for the, my, my promise. So you grab yours, you grab yours, you grab yours. All of us grab our verse. Yes. We read it some, and, and then we praise God. You hold hands together. Thank you Father for the night we had. Thank you for this beautiful day. Thank you for giving us each other around this table. Yes. And now as we take our different, go our different ways as our children go to school, anoint them with your blood. Cover them, we pray thee. Protect them from harm as daddy goes to work, as mommy goes out, as we all separate. We place ourselves in your gracious, powerful, capable hands. And we ask you to bring us all back safely this evening. And that's your prayer for the day. Remember that as you go. As the children go to play, they remember they're covered because we had worship this morning. Mm -hmm. and, and so we're covered. We're covered in the taxi. We're covered in the bus. We're covered in the train. We're covered in the airplane. We're covered on the play field. We're covered in the office. We're covered no matter what happens. Remember, yes. you're covered. Jesus covers me with his righteousness and his blood and his protection. And holy angels are watching over me. I can go in the name of the Lord and face any challenge for Amen. that Amen. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, Pastor Kurt, it's so amazing how you, you make worship sound so easy, so practical, and so fun with your suggestions. And I think that's something that I think the viewers should appreciate. Yes, it is a necessity. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> now, you would have brought forth different aspects, well, different family members. Mm -hmm. You said the mom, the child, mm -hmm. and the, the father, mm -hmm. and the sister, and the brother, of course. Mm -hmm. But does each family member play a specific role in family worship? Each family member plays a the, the, the key person in family worship has got to be in the home where there's a father. Mm -hmm. Father is a priest. The father... The father is responsible to be, he has a, not a number of responsibilities, but it's most, in Old Testament times, the most important role of a father was to the priest of the family. Mm. So he's the priest, he's the provider, and he's the protector. And he stands in those three P's capacity. And he fulfills his responsibility, number one, as the spiritual leader of his family. And he guides the family into what the Lord says in Deuteronomy, these words shall be in your heart. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy mind, with all thy soul. The Lord thy God is one God. And worship him. And these words I command you shall be in your heart. And you teach them diligently unto your children. This is the order of God. And God expects a father to ensure that his children who come after him shall preserve that strong spiritual legacy. Mm -hmm. And in, in ancient Israel, the Bible says when it, by the time of the judges, a generation came up that knew not God, which means that somebody dropped the ball. Hmm. The fathers failed in transmitting spiritual values and that spiritual legacy. Where there is no father, the mother takes over as the role of mom and dad. And God bless them. There are many like that. They're doing a wonderful work. 
but everybody comes in and make it easy for daddy so that daddy is encouraged to see everybody attending worship. He's encouraged when everybody joins in singing, right. choose your song for the time, or read a scripture, or give an idea, share your thought, but have communication around the table. That is one area of weakness in families. And that is one thing that family worship seeks to correct. Improving communication among family members. This is strengthened when the family meet together around the table or in the living room, mm -hmm. around the altar to pray and to help to understand one another better. Yes? Yes, sir. <laughs> Thank you so much for letting our parents know what their role should be. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Yes. And, yes. and I, I heard how you slipped it in there with the children's role should be. We should be very willing to say the scripture or to say the song. Yeah, participate. Yes, we yes. must participate. Yes. I know that my mom will always refer to this every time she makes mention of worship now. <laughs> okay. yes. Now, as we seek to close, I want you to speak to three types of people that are viewing right now. Mm -hmm. The first someone who might be struggling to find time within their busy schedule mm. to even have family worship. Mm. The mm. next, someone who may not know what to do or, or how to figure out this whole concept called family worship. Mm. And thirdly, one who may not even see the importance of family worship. Yeah. Ellen G. White made a powerful statement. I, I think it is from the book Great uh, Child Guidance. Uh, page page 520, she says, in every family, there should be a fixed time for morning and evening worship. How appropriate it is for parents to gather their children about them before the fast is broken. When evening comes, to gather once more before him and thank him for the blessings of the day past. Very important. You can't be too busy for this. Our family is our most precious and, and dear responsibility. The protection of our family, the care of God, the, the presence of holy angels, protection from evil. We are faced with all kinds of challenges from the enemy. Can't be too busy. Drug abuse and drug and alcohol addiction. We have those issues. We have divorce. We have communication problems. We have workplace issues. We have child gone wild situations, mm -hmm. teenage pregnancies. Uh, uh, we have major problems. We have spousal abuse situations. We have children failing in school. Um, we have all kinds of issues that face us. We are faced and bombarded by evil. Jesus himself called it evil. And he said when he taught his disciples to pray, deliver us from evil. Because he knows that evil comes at our doorsteps. And we are surrounded by it every day. So we cannot be too busy to pray. That is the warning I'd give to anybody who wants to think that time is so busy. God comes first. And the safety of ourselves and our family members. Um, it's easy to structure the worship experience, like I say, make it age appropriate, make it convenient for, for everyone. Take your time and discuss together how we can make it uh, a wonderful experience for everyone mm -hmm. in the family. And some folks can go a little longer, some has to make it shorter, but take it to the Lord. Any questions you have about how to do what God requires? The way to get around it is to go to the Lord and say to him, Lord, I sense my need for more time with you. I sense my need to, for my family to spend more time in worshiping. I don't know how, but will you please teach me? I want to do your will. And so I beg you to show me how. And you'll be surprised to see and amazed to see how God steps in. And when he finds someone willing to do his will, he says, he that will do it, will, we will know. He will show him what to do. He will guide him with his powerful hand. Father, lead me day 
by day, ever in thine own sweet way. That's what the family wants to do. And so take all those matters to the Lord and say, Lord, I'm willing. I hear your voice. I know you're calling me. I know you have a demand on my life, a demand on my family. I know your expectations of me. I'm willing. I don't know how. Please help me. And the Holy Spirit is our helper. That's what Jesus said he would be, the divine helper. He is the one who will help us mm -hmm. accomplish the will of God in our lives. So, so trust him. And I'm happy to tell you that beginning on Sabbath of this week, we are celebrating a full week of marriage and the family. Wonderful. Christian home and marriage week. Yeah? And it embraces, the, this week embraces two Sabbaths. Mm -hmm. Sabbath February 10 and Sabbath February 17. Okay. The first Sabbath focuses on Christian marriage. Mm -hmm. And the second Sabbath focuses on Christian parenting. So, so we are encouraging all our churches to take time to place focus on these weeks these yes. are calendar events that come to us from the General Conference. And the General Conference not only just send us these calendar events, but they send us resource material. Mm. Siobhan, okay. We have so much. We have sermons. We have children's stories. We have PowerPoint. We have presentations that you could use for, for seminars and, and for workshops. We have material for leadership training in families. Yes. We, we have material to match the needs of every interest group in the, in the church. And, and you know, the church is a family comprising of everybody. And we have the singles, we have the men, we have the women, we have the children, we have the adolescent, we have the youth, we, we have, have the, everyone. the senior citizens, wow. we have yeah, we have the special needs folks. Yes. So, and these programs come with material and resources to meet the needs of all these interest groups. And so we're encouraging our churches, mm -hmm. our pastors, our elders, our family ministries, reverend in the churches who lead in these departments to if it hasn't reached the local church, ask the pastor for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah? I have to whisper that to you, eh? <laughs> ask the pastor for the material. And if the pastor doesn't have it, tell him to ask the conference, conference. for it. Yes. It's there. They got it. I got it from the general conference, and I make that available to the conferences. Mm -hmm. If it has not reached a local church, please ask. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Good. Thank you so much, Pastor Carr, for being here, for always, always being such a wonderful guest and sharing so much knowledge. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, and I do hope to see you again. It's Ladies and gentlemen, pleasure. thank you so much for staying tuned and for being a part of our family time and worship right here at the Union. Ladies and gentlemen, in 2018, as we continue to seek to do better, let us make that time for family time and family worship. This has been a production of the Atlantic Caribbean Union of Seventh-day Adventists, proudly representing the Bahamas, Cayman Islands, and Turks and Caicos Islands. Do come back for our next episode.